actions on land affect coral reefs. There are many things people do on land that hurt this beautiful ecosystem. Are there things we can do on land that help coral reefs? There are! What do you think they might be? Aloha! I'm artist and art teacher Maggie Sutro. I bring my art supplies with me everywhere, and today I'm painting with two conservation groups who are working on land to help our underwater habitats. And then we are going to create a painting together. But first, we're going to start at Ma'alaya Harbor, where the Maui Nui Marine Resource Council are cleaning the harbor water with help from their friends, the oysters. Each oyster filters up to 50 gallons of water each day. But we wouldn't know how well this worked if scientists didn't come down each month to check on them. They weigh the oysters, they count them, and they see how healthy they are. As they do their work, I do mine. I use art to communicate what scientists and environmentalists do to care for our island. What does a painting express that a photo doesn't? Maui Nui Marine Resource Council does even more work protecting the coral reefs just up the hill from Ma'alaya Harbor. This area is called Pohakea Watershed. Have you noticed how this part of Maui is almost always so dry? Where else on our island have you noticed that it hardly ever rains? It does rain in these places sometimes though, and when it does, it comes down in buckets and any dirt not held down by plants flow with the rainwater right into the ocean. When it downpours in Kula, all that dirt washes down to Kihei and Wailea, and it doesn't even have to rain in Kihei for Kihei to get filled with mud, and then all that dirt keeps flowing right into the ocean. So why is this bad for the coral? Well, every tiny dot on the coral is a separate tiny animal, a polyp. It has tentacles for catching little bits of food that float by at night, but during the day, they get their energy from the sun. If they're covered in mud, how's that gonna work? And the runoff often includes more than just mud. Fertilizer can cause too much algae to grow. Pesticides can hurt the coral. Oil that washes off the highway hurts the coral too. So, even though these rainstorms might only happen a couple times a year, they can cause a lot of damage unless we take care of these dry land areas. Today, we are planting vetiver. It is a type of grass that grows with very long roots. It isn't native, but it grows in clumps so it won't spread. And its seeds aren't viable, meaning it won't make new plants. These vetiver starts hardly look alive, but we keep bringing them water and they will grow deep roots that hold the soil. And they are also great at sucking up toxins in the soil too. A ohehana nui ke alu ia. No task is too big when done together by all. As I paint, I notice how dry the hillside is. There is so much dry dirt 
that would flow right down the mountain, the green lines of vetiver stand together in protection of the coral reefs. I imagine the hillside when it is covered with lines of the strong vetiver grass. Next, I go to Ka'anapali to visit another group, the Coral Reef Alliance, where again, we are going to be protecting the reef by going up on the slopes of Mount Kahalawai, the West Maui Mountains. This part of the Wahikuli watershed used to be cane fields, and the old dirt roads become streams of mud when it rains, draining right down into the ocean, except where vetiver and peely grass have been planted to hold the dirt in place. Do you see how the topsoil is collecting here above the grass? During a recent rainstorm, four tons of dirt were held up on the mountain by these plantings. That soil is perfect for planting more plants. Today, we are adding even more native plants, Aali'i and Ualoa. These are hardy native plants that can handle dry conditions. The grasses will be the first line of defense against the rains, and these other plants will add to the ground cover and create beautiful native habitat that also protects the coral reefs. Imagine when this really, really tree is tall enough for us to sit under in its shade and look down at the beautiful ocean full of protected coral reefs. Both Maui Nui Marine Resource Council and the Coral Reef Alliance do regular plantings. Every one of these plants was put in the soil by hand, by someone who cared, by someone who smiled at the little plant and wished it to grow large and healthy to help create a beautiful ecosystem and to protect the coral reef as well. You can be like the people in these paintings. You too can volunteer and be a part of caring for these places. We can also create artwork to inspire the people of Maui to take care of our aina in order to protect our coral reefs. And now, just like I was out there painting to communicate how people are taking care of our land in order to take care of our ocean, you get to create a work of art that does the same. In the artworks that we are going to create, we're going to have an area that is dry land on Maui, and you are going to be in charge of how that area is going to get planted in order to take care of our coral reefs. And then, of course, we'll have an underwater part of the artwork where you get to show how healthy or even maybe how not healthy your coral reef is. Okay, so these are the supplies that you are going to need. You are going to need one watercolor paper. This watercolor paper is six inches by nine inches. It's very special paper. Take good care of it. You're gonna need a pencil and an eraser. You may want an extra fine tip Sharpie, but this is optional. You will want some oil pastels. Your oil pastels may look different than mine. And if you don't have oil pastels, crayons work too. And we are going to paint today. So you are going to want some watercolors. You're going to want a paintbrush. You're going to want a cup of water. Don't fill it up too high. And whenever we paint, we also want a paper towel. So what are we going to need again? Your watercolor paper, pencil, and eraser. That's what we're going to start with. And if you have a extra fine tip Sharpie, that is great, but it's optional. Crayons or oil pastels, and then our painting supplies for the last part. Okay, to begin with, we're going to start with just the pencil and the eraser. And so, in this artwork that you get to create, there's gonna be an area of land and an area of ocean. Let's decide what that land is going to look like. I'm gonna make mine, again, I really like drawing that Pohakea watershed area. Ma'alaya is somewhere I've spent a lot of time and I'm thinking about what that hillside is like, that mountainside as it comes down. And then I'm gonna make it so that there's the coastline 
coming across. And I'm going to have that come across and curve. And so up here is going to be sky. This is land and this is water. And so the first thing I'm going to do on mine, since I'm being inspired by Pohakea watershed, is there would be those wind turbines up here. And of course, yours can be of a different part of the island. Doesn't have to have those there. But I like that we are using wind energy and it helps us know right away. Oh yeah, that's right. This is land and that is that ridge line where those wind turbines are. And now I think, well, what else is going on on here? Do I want to have the road that goes across to the poly? I think that I do. You get to choose what you want in yours, but I'm going to put that road there. And you know, one of the things that causes a lot of erosion is when there are roads going up the mountain, especially if these roads aren't paved. And there's an old road over here that is dirt. So when it rains over here, so much of that dirt comes down that road. So I decided to put that in there. Let's see, what else am I going to put in? The harbor, I'm putting in what have human beings done to this area? And ooh, cars cause a lot of pollution too. They have all of their oil that comes off onto the road. And then when it rains, that goes into the water too. And down the ways, there's some condominiums that have been there for a long time. I'm going to do those condominiums by a rectangle. And then if I want to make them look 3D, I have lines come out from the edges of the rectangle and then I connect those lines. These condos were built a long time ago and you know what? They are trying to rebuild how they take care of their poop. Because right now it kind of just all goes out into the ocean there. It gets treated a tiny bit and then it's out there hurting our coral reef. You get to decide how you want to do yours. If you want yours without the condos there, if you're doing a different part of Maui, totally good. And now we've put in some of the ways that people have affected this coastline. And a lot of these things definitely do not help the coral reef. But now let's get ready to go on a planting up on this hillside. What plants do you want to put in there? Some of the ones that we saw before was vetiver, which is a really useful grass, even if it's not native. And then there's peely grass, which has beautiful seeds and it is native. And then we have a'ali'i, which is a very hardy and beautiful native plant. And then we've got uhaloa. And maybe even we put in some woolly woolly trees. These will take a while to grow, but they are such amazing trees that in the summertime, they lose their leaves. But in the fall, they bloom beautiful red orange flowers. And so take a look at these and think, if you were to draw them small, what shapes would you use? What lines would you use? Now, I've got this road here. What if we said no one's driving up this road anymore? Let's plant some grass across it. Because when we plant grass across like that, it stops the rain coming down. It doesn't rain over here very often, but when it does, oh my goodness, it comes down so hard and all of that dirt ends up down here in the ocean. So I'm choosing where am I going to plant grass? Now, planting out there is a lot of work. So I'm not just saying, oh, I planted everything. You need to draw in the details of where you want it. It's great that the scientists are putting vetiver in some spots and peely grass in other spots because over time, we can find out which one works better. They can study it. And I'm going to put in some a'ali'i. The a'ali'i has these beautiful pointed leaves and their seed pods remind people of an ali'i's helmet. And so a'ali'i. So I'm going to choose how am I going to use some little shapes, some little lines to make some a'ali'i plants here because those will help hold the soil too. You might have a different way of doing them than me, but take your time with each one. Make each one of those plants beautiful, even if it's small, because it is going to help this hillside. 
it is going to help it stay green and help hold all of that soil up there. And the Uhaloa, oh, I love these with their very soft little leaves. I'm going to put some of those and I'm going to do like a little stem and then little bits like that, little stem and little soft leaves. And I always wonder if you go out the backside of Haleakala, past Kanayo, you see a lot of willy willy trees and it's really dry out there. But why aren't there willy willy trees on the road to Lahaina? It's just as dry there. I wonder if there used to be. And so let's plant some over here. Let's have this part have some willy willy trees too. Just a couple of these because they take a long time to grow. It's more vetiver up here. Great. And so I have my hillside planted. There might be some areas for us to keep planting, but I have most of it having some plants in it. Wonderful. Now I'm going to decide what's happening in the ocean. Now, there's one little thing I want to check before I do my ocean. I've got ocean here, sky here. Can I really tell where the ocean ends and the sky begins? I need a horizon. I can make it right there or I can make it further back. Like right there. I kind of like it. Right there. And you know what? Hmm. I'm going to decide what's the weather like today. Is it hot and sunny or is it one of those few days of the year where there are rain clouds? So I'm going to make layers of clouds here. Maybe it's not raining yet. Maybe it is saying that it is going to rain soon. Maybe it already rained. Hmm. What's the weather like in your artwork? And so now we did our sky and this one is nice and sunny. We drew our hillside and now let's do our coral reef. What do you want to have living in there? Now, here are some examples. Ooh, look at these amazing corals that we can put in. Let's see, what are the lines and shapes that we see in them? You can see what sort of patterns and textures are in them. Ooh, I love this one here. I'm gonna do a big brain coral. It comes like this. And I'm going to draw all those squiggles in there. See, it's kind of like drawing a maze. Oh, this is fun. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And if I get bored, I can start again with another one. And sometimes it disappears over the edge. Ooh, yes. But you know what? I think I need a fish in front of this. Or maybe I'll have another coral sticking up here. Yeah, I'm going to have that overlap. And you know what? I don't want that line there. I'm going to change that and go like that. And then I'm going to have an eel sticking his head up. There we go. I've got an eel now. You get to decide what sort of animals you want in yours. I'm going to keep adding those textures in. But what other animals? Do you want in here besides coral? How about some fish? I am going to put a humu in here. And so this humu, let's see, what is its shape like? Hmm, it's got a pointy nose and then it's straight back and then it's like that. Huh, it's sort of like a one, two, three, four, five, six hexagon with a tail. And it's got its eye high up and its nose isn't actually that pointy. And I see that it has a mask that comes down like this, down like that, and it has a triangle here and another triangle there and some fins. There we go. I've got my huma huma nuku nuku wapu wa. And that's a great one. And how about a honu? I'm going to put one in right over here. I've got its shell and I'm not making them too big because I've got a whole ocean here and I've got the head off the edge of the shell. I've got the bottom of the shell there 
And then I'm going to draw the neck going out to the head. I'm going to have the fin coming out, another fin coming out, and it's going to go over top of its belly and a bit of a tail there. And put in the eye, mouth, and I can put in more details later, but I have a Honu. And now, we are not just putting fish in like that, right? Because have you ever actually seen a fish that just looked like that? No, the fish in our oceans are so amazing. And each one is a different, unique species. And so notice what sort of shapes are they? What sort of colors and lines? And you can simplify them, but still express those beautiful fish, like this one, the lao wili wili nuku nuku oi oi. Lao, like leaf. Wili wili, like our wili wili trees that we put in. Nuku nuku oi oi, well, it's got a long nose. And so I'm gonna draw some of these. Let's see, I'm gonna put one here, and it's got sort of a square body with a nose coming out and a tail. There we go. And the little eye right there. I'm gonna do another one of those. Square body, nose coming out, tail, eye, and fin. See, not so hard. Put in more details if you want, but already it's an interesting fish. And let's see. Ooh, the yellow tangs are really important because they eat a lot of the algae that can grow on the reefs. And so I'm seeing what sort of shapes are they? They've got a little nose coming out and they got their fin coming over the top. Maybe I'll put a couple of those in. Now, I think I need more coral reef though, because I have some coral over here, but I want layers of coral. So I'm gonna keep going behind my fish. But one thing I've decided in my piece is that I want to show what healthy coral reef looks like, but this area of Pohakea watershed, that water by Ma'alaya Bay and by these condos, it's not a healthy coral reef. And so I want to have some areas where the coral isn't alive anymore. And so I'm going to have some that's kind of broken and it's still there, but there isn't really anything living over in this area. And then also even in the healthy area, I'm going to make more coral reef going back and back, but it doesn't need as many details because you know how things sort of fade away in the ocean. There we go. I'm going to look at mine one more time and see what's one more detail I could add. One area that needs a little something more. You look at yours too and find that one more thing. Okay, I found a couple more details to add. What did you add to your piece? Next, one more thing before we color. Either go over all of your amazing lines with the Sharpie or use your pencil on it to make it dark. So again, if you have one of these, sharp your lines. If you don't have one of these, then just darken in your lines and make anywhere that's like rock or roads dark with pencil. Okay, I'm gonna sharpie. If you go over your pencil lines with sharpie, then you get to make those lines bold. You get to make them stand out. And if there's any lines that you want to change, you have one more chance to do it. And then you can simply erase all the pencil lines that you're not keeping.
Okay, I sharpied mine. Now I'm gonna erase all the pencil lines. Ooh, sometimes I miss spots. There we go. Pop those. And then all those eraser bits I'm gonna put into the trash. And make it so I have a nice clean area for the next step. So this one I sharpie, this one I didn't. Both can be beautiful. So I'm gonna put my oil pastel on my artwork in some very important ways because we want to save space for the painting part. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put oil pastel wherever I put plants. And so I'm gonna use my green, but what I'm gonna use before I use my green is my yellow and my blue. What happens when I put yellow down and then put blue on top? <gasps> I get beautiful greens. And so that way I can have lighter green grasses and I can have darker green plants where I have just a little yellow on top of them. And so I get to play with it not all being the same. If I just use this green, it's gonna make all my plants the same and they're not all the same. Like the Willy Willy, maybe it's got its blossoms, its red orange blossoms. And you know what? Its bark is kind of orangey. And so maybe I'll do that on my Willy Willy. You might have different colors in me in your crayons or oil pastels, but one way or another, put that on your plants, not across the whole hillside, because we're gonna paint the hillside. See, there's a green, but oh, when I use the yellow and the blue, it's so much more interesting. So even if I use the green, put those other colors in there too. Some in the Uhaloa and the Aoli'i. Make sure you don't miss any, make sure you get them. And so, I did my plants in oil pastel. Another area that we're gonna do oil pastel is we're gonna do the sky. And if you want it to be a bright sunny day and you only have a dark blue, put down just a little bit of the blue and then put white over top. And this works with crayon too, blend it in there. So for the sky, we're gonna use oil pastel differently. We're gonna fill in the whole sky. Oh. I got some smudges where I didn't want them. I'm gonna clean off my fingers on my paper towel. Sometimes you need to do that with oil pastels. You can also use the paper towel to clean your oil pastels. Crayons, sometimes as well, but they don't get as dirty. But also, I made my sky so that it's raining and dark. So I'm gonna put some dark colors in there, some purple in there, maybe a little bit of gray. I want for the sky to be filled in all the way. So I'm gonna go over it with my white if I didn't fill it in all the way with the other colors. That way, not over the wind turbines, but everything that's not that mountainside is going to be oil pastel. And one of the things I love about oil pastel, and it works with crayon too, but oil pastel does it even more, is that you can keep layering. Ooh, I like that. Great. Now, I'm gonna do the buildings in oil pastel too. And if you're not sure what color to make them, just make them white. And, ooh, I've got some, some cars and things. I'm going to color those. I am coloring everything on land that the water won't stick to. What's really neat about oil pastels is that I can put oil pastel in these spots, but when I paint, it won't cover it. So things that we have used oil pastels for, the sky, the plants, the buildings. And now we are going to do our animals and coral reef in oil pastel. And for the animals, we are going to fill them in 
with oil pastel so they really stand out. Remember how those colors work? Where are they light? Where are they dark? Those oil pastels are going to help them show up. Oh, that's right. La Willy Willy Miku Miku. Oi, oi. Got yellow here. Yellow. A little bit of black I forgot to do. Mmm. That eel. I'm going to do that eel. I'm going to fill it in all the way. And the Honu as well. Not really that green though. Let's see, what other colors do I want in my Honu? What other colors do you want in your animals? Make sure that inside the animals, it's filled in all the way. And then for the coral reef, we're going to outline it. You're gonna find those beautiful lines and go over them. You can add more designs if you want, but we're not filling in. Don't worry about filling it in. Let it be wiggly lines with space in between. And so these coral reefs, when they are healthy, they are full of amazing colors. And when they're not healthy, they're grays and whites because they're bleached and really kind of sad looking. So here, over here, I've got one, it's got one little vana, but it's mostly dead. And you can tell by the colors that I'm using that over here, is not so healthy. Maybe it's got a little algae growing on it because when it's not healthy, it has too much algae on there. So gray and green is what I'm gonna do for over here because I chose to have part of my coral reef be less healthy. You can choose how you want to do yours. Let's see, some more bright coral reef colors. What other ones do I want to do? Ooh, let's do some purple. And sometimes as the coral reef gets farther away, I'll make more purple and blue colors for the outline. And this really makes your artwork exciting, especially if you didn't Sharpie it. But even if you did, you want to have all of that detail in there. Okay, ooh. Now, with your oil pastels, find one more thing that you can add. Where can you have a little bit more color? Where is there a detail that you just didn't quite give enough attention? I want a little bit more of this red orange down in there. And anything on land? I think it's good. Okay, so we have drawn it. You might have gone over your pencil lines with Sharpie, or maybe you didn't. And then we did oil pastel. We did the oil pastel on the plants. Check. Did you put oil pastel or crayon on all of your plants? Did you put it in the sky? Did you put it on the buildings? If you have buildings in your artwork, if you don't, no need. And did you fill in your animals? And did you outline your coral and maybe give it some texture? Doesn't have to be filled in all the way now. Remember that. If you did all of those things, then guess what? You are ready to paint. I'm gonna put my oil pastels away all nicely because I'm switching art supplies now. And as we've done this, with the drawing and the, the coloring, you might have gone faster than me, you might have gone slower than me and had to stop the video. All is good, but with the painting, I want you to do it right along with me, okay? Because I have my paints here. 
this is how it's going to look when it's done. I have my water, I have my brush, and I have my paper towel. That's everything that we are going to need. And so I'm gonna check that my brush is nice and happy, that it has a nice tip. I give it a little bit of a hug, and I notice that it is clean. We're gonna use a technique today that's called watercolor wash. And this artwork, it's about what happens on this hillside when it rains really hard, right? It's about how these plants that you chose to put on your hillside protects the ocean. So the way that we're gonna paint this, we're gonna find out how well you protected your ocean. And if there are some spots where the dirt flows into the ocean, that's okay. You're showing people what the challenges are that we're trying to fix. And so mine, I think it might flow in. That's fine. And if you protected your shoreline so much that your ocean stays perfect, also amazing. You're showing what we can move towards. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a watercolor wash on the ocean. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to put water everywhere that it's ocean. I'm not even going to put paint yet. I'm just going to carefully everywhere that there is ocean put water. And so that's right over the coral, right over my fish right over all of these details. And so if you notice, I'm using the side of my brush. That allows me to cover more space. If I was using just the tip, then it would take me a lot longer, but I'm still doing careful strokes like this, making sure I go all the way to the edges. I don't want to miss anywhere that is underwater, anywhere that is ocean. Okay, I'm checking. Oh, I found some spots that I didn't do with water. And oh, over here, that was ocean too. So I'm going to fill in that area and over there, all of that. And I'm checking. Did I miss anywhere? Nope, I got it all. Check yours. And when you have all of this area with water, then you're going to take some water and put it in your blue. I'm waking up my blue. I have a paintbrush full of blue paint. And watch this. Oh yes, Ooh, I want even more blue paint. <gasps> blue watercolor that flows. I might need more water in my blue. Wake it up a little bit more. And ooh, that's dark. And look, I put it right on top of my yellow fish, but it's not covering the yellow. So I'm making sure that everywhere that is ocean had blue flow into it. And if you want some areas to be darker, let some areas be darker. Some areas to be lighter, that's okay too. Now, you planted this amazing hillside and now the rain is going to come and we're gonna see how well your plants help save the water runoff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a watercolor wash on the hillside. See how I have clean water and I am putting it on the hillside just like I did before where I'm using the side of the brush carefully stroke, stroke, control, control. And if I'm getting to an edge that I'm worried about, I can use the tip and then I have even more control. And if little bits of the oil pastel stick to your brush, just wipe them off your brush. It's all right. And so I'm going all the way to the edges over here. And I'm going to go right over the road because you know what? That stuff's going to run right over the road. And ooh, if that blue comes in a little bit, that's all right. Don't worry about that yet. We're going to make things so that it flows the other way anyways. Ooh. Oh, wow doing that a lot, but don't worry about that. And so up here above the ocean, sometimes it's just dirt. Sometimes it's pesticides and fertilizers from where there used to be farming. Sometimes there's things coming in from the road or from other buildings. And so there's lots of different types of pollution. So instead of just using brown for dirt, 
we're going to be more expressive than that. And besides, there's other ways of making brown. I'm going to start with yellow. I'm going to wake up my yellow. And this is going to be the first color I put in. I'm going to take a lot of yellow. I'm going to put it up here on my mountain. And that mountain, I'm going to let that yellow flow down. And look what's happening. And if there's some areas you missed, you can even let it keep flowing. Oh my goodness, that dirt went right into the water. And this area, I don't think used to have any farms, but if it did, it might have had pesticides. So I'm going to take some red, not a lot of red, but I'm going to get some red on there. I'm going to put that in as well. Maybe there's specially red on the road there. And I'm going to put some more red in there, more over there, and let that also flow down. And oh my goodness, look what's happening toward the coral reef. Oh, I found an area that's not flowing, but I want to flow. You get to be an artist, but you also get to just see what happens here. What's going on? And look at all the silt that is landing on the coral. All of that is going to cover the coral, and then it can't get sunlight. And that is part of how it gets its energy. And if it's not brown enough, then you can add a little bit of blue. Maybe this blue is what comes off of the road. Maybe this is the oil because after it rains, all the oil that is leaked out of the cars, then that all runs off. And so we've got some of that there and that can make it more brown too. And so you can put a little bit of blue in there, not too much. We don't want it to look like the ocean, but we've got those. Some areas might need more yellow. You get to decide how you want to do this. And you know what? Remember how I mentioned that these condos, they've got a problem with their poop going into the ocean? Actually, this whole area. So I'm gonna put some of that bad colors right into the ocean there to show that, ooh, there's stuff going in there that shouldn't be. And so there we go, some of that. And so I have some healthy ocean, but I also have some areas that have some issues. How is your coral reef? Is your coral reef healthy? Is it working hard to stay alive? How did your planting on the hillside help your coral reef? Wow, what an incredible work of art. Take a look at yours. Look at it and just find your favorite part of it. What part of it makes you happy? when you look at that detail. Also, remember, we used a bunch of art supplies that we want to take care of. Make sure you wash your brush out, dry it off on your paper towel, and take a look at your palette. Your paint might need a little bit of cleaning too. And so make sure everything is nice and clean when you put it away, and you're gonna want somewhere safe for your amazing painting to dry. Here are a few questions for you to think on. First, how healthy are the coral reefs in the painting that you created? Second, if someone else looks at your artwork, what details in it are going to communicate to them about the health of your coral reef? And finally, what else do you want to do to help Maui's coral reefs? When you create art, it's from the heart. And when you share your art, you inspire other people. And when people are inspired, they want to make the world a more beautiful place. That might mean that they want to make more art. It also might mean that they want to take care of our coral reefs. And so share this art, share what you learned today and help Maui's coral reefs be a healthy, happy habitat that 
all of these amazing species can enjoy and that we as a community can enjoy together. Ahui ho! I'm Maggie Sutroff and I can't wait to see your art out there in the world and to make more art with you in the future. <music>